there's a young lady named DJ. Uh, the day before our mother's, me and Crystal's mother's funeral, she sent us a text and she said, I don't have much to give, but I can come over before your mother's funeral. She's a makeup artist and just put some makeup on your faces for you. That was a beautiful act of service. And to your point, she just used the gifting that she had. I think about what God said in Genesis to Adam. He said, you know, be fruitful and multiply, subdue the earth, have dominion over it. And I think that's kind of where it started, where God put this inspiration in us to achieve. But I think sometimes we get that off course. We put our achievement over what's really important in life and what God really wants us to do. And that's just to be there for one another, yeah. love one another, serve one another. You know, it's not our position, like what title we hold or what position we hold at work or, you know, what's, what's before our name or after our name, but really it's the position of our heart that I think pleases God. And, you know, we've been talking about, you know, how Jesus came to serve. He didn't come to be served, but he came to serve. And he showed us so beautifully when he washed the disciples' feet, you know, and I can just imagine because we all do this, you know, maybe it's in our minds, maybe it's not like verbally, but you can just imagine people sitting around like, well, you know, I've done that before. And, you know, well, I, I've, I've, I've done that even though they've done that. And that's basically what they said, you know, yeah. who's the greatest one here, Right. you know, and they were arguing among themselves. And Jesus realized these guys have been with me. They've seen me, but they haven't got it yet. Yeah. They just haven't got it yet. And so I love what the scripture says. And the story goes on to say that he got up, filled up a basin and began to wash their feet. And, you know, it just shows us so clearly that he was trying to say to them, you know, it's not who's the greatest. Mm -hmm. It's not who's the greatest among us, but it's what are we willing to do for one another? And I love that so much because, you know, he was basically saying, you know, it's not uh, that you shouldn't be influential. Yeah. It's not that you shouldn't have, you know, success, but it's where you place that success and that influence. Yeah. You know, it's not, you know, to serve, but that's your, that's your position is to serve. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's part of that influence. That's part of that positioning. And I think this culture, sometimes we get it wrong. You know, and we think we're supposed to be served. And the more we have, the more people should give us accolades yeah. and, and come to us for, you know, wisdom and all the things, you know. So it's interesting to note that Jesus really taught us, you know, it is in our position that we serve. Yeah. Serving is an accomplishment. It's like, that's my, my way to get where I want to be. Like, oh, well, I'll serve to get there. And then it's like, you forget that's what got you there and you quit serving. Like even David, he served. And when did he fall? He fell when he quit serving. He was like, well, I'm now a king, so I don't need to do that anymore. And it's like, in our culture, we think, well, that's our way to something, but not our way to sustain it. And it's like Jesus all the way to the cross and even on the cross was like, I will serve the whole way and I'll serve every part of it. It's not just a act to try to get a position. Like you said, this is who I am. Yeah. This is the bottom line of what I'm called to do is to serve the people around me and to love them. And I do think that is our culture is like, this is my accomplishment. This is what I've done. And then when I get there, well, I don't need to serve anymore. I can, I will be served. I can have servants. I'll have those that'll help me. And it's like, well, that's not, that's not it. I feel like we lose, we lose the art of it. We lose some of that when we, Feel, feel like we've arrived somewhere. As we're talking about this, I'm sitting here thinking about how this kind of a mentality would shift so many little decisions we make throughout the day. Yeah. If as we go throughout our morning or our afternoon or we're functioning with our spouses or our kids or coworkers or uh, maybe people that are employed at our ministries or offices or whatever, that if as we make a decision about how to proceed, if our perspective is oriented around others and about, around service, it would literally change the way we actually make choices because yeah. we're not thinking about self and how this is going to boost me up or how this is going to cater to what I need right now. Um, it's going to shift our perspective to the people around us, and that's going to literally change decisions that we're making throughout the day. And then we trust the Lord to give back to us 
what it is that we've poured into others instead right. of depending upon everybody else to be for us, right. who only the Lord is supposed to be for yeah. us. You know, he takes care your, of that. Change your world, can't it? Yeah, <laughs> it changes our world, changes yeah. the way we relate to the people who are around us all day yeah. long mm. in very practical ways. Yeah. Even serving, I think to your point, this idea that serving gets me somewhere, mm -hmm. um, in reverse, it could even be the same. Okay, well, I'm supposed to serve, and so what does service look like? And um, service is so small often. Mm -hmm. It's small things that maybe only you and the Lord actually know about, mm -hmm. um, things that you don't get applauded on the back for, because even in the culture of being a believer and having other people around you who are believers, there's an applause, applaud for service. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, um, you know, Jesus said that he wanted to be involved in what his father was doing. And that's the question that I have to ask myself. That's the question we have to ask ourselves. What is, what is God doing and how do I get involved with that? And if no one else besides my father knows that I got involved with what he was doing, then that has to be okay. Mm -hmm. um, because I think, again, even in reverse, okay, now I'm going to make an attempt to serve because, right. you know, I want to make sure that I'm not getting too big for my britches. <laughs> okay, but what are we doing to send off serve signals? <laughs> yeah. You know, like, <laughs> I served, you know. I mean, you see this all the time with um, people, be not just in ministry, just philanthropists to be able to say how much I gave of my resources. Um, but people get a good pat on the back for doing good deeds. And really, who are you doing it for? And if no one ever knows, is that enough? Mm -hmm. You know, And is it enough to know that I did what I was supposed to do today? We have to tell ourselves this when our children are small and we have to say, this is the service that I'm rendering to my family in this season. We have to tell ourselves that when our children are large <laughs> 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 because you're doing things that by now, they should know to be appreciative of, and they're not. Um, we do these things for um, aging parents. I think about all the caregivers that are watching where you're showing up and serving maybe your parents, and they're not thankful that you're putting your life on hold to serve them. Um, I mean, this, this goes all the way around and in every season, and I think the question that I have to ask myself and that we all need to ask ourselves is, if God is the only one who knows, because I was doing and willing to be a part of what he was doing, is that applause enough? Right. And honestly, if the answer is no, then that's the quieter you should be. Mm -hmm. You know, that that's a signal that if I really wanted someone to know that I did it, then that's a signal to tell fewer, if anyone. Um, service is so personal, yeah. but it's a, it's a wonderful personal act of worship and service to the God who did a lot of things that only as we become sanctified and grow in grace that we realize how grace is extends, how far it extends, and how far He has served us by being there for us. We, we only get to know that greater and more as we grow in Him. And some things are just not supposed to be known. Hmm. You know, Crystal, and that's interesting that you're saying that because it makes me feel like it's going to be harder and harder for each generation coming up after us because this world that's so centered around social media, mm -hmm. um, which is, has great benefits, it's, it's great, it's fun, and it can also be beneficial. But this idea that everything I do, I post. Yeah. Everything I do, I make a thing about, and I'm looking for response about what it is that I did, whether it's just in a like or comments or that little bit of appreciation that we, you know, kind of warms our heart that people notice we did it. Well, you know, my sons, your sons, our children, they're growing up in this time period where everything about everybody's life is done to, for a photo op to be posted. And it's just a regular part of life. So how do we help younger people who they've only known a life with social media? They were born in this technological age. They've only known it this way. How do we cultivate in them an appreciation for that quiet service mm -hmm. and doing it as unto the Lord when all they've ever known is? Right. posting about everything that right. I do in my life. Well, you know, I think about um, the disciples following Jesus. So many of the things that they learned that took them a while to learn is because they were walking with him and seeing him do the things that he needed to model for them. They had to watch him do it over and over and over yeah. again. You know, he was like, have you yet been with me this long and you still <laughs> yeah. don't get it? 
So yeah. I think that's where discipleship comes in. That's where mentoring comes in. That's where you need older women in your life or women who are further along than you in the faith. That's where we show our children. Um, I mean, I you know, there's a place in our home where when you're in the home, this is where your devices are at. Now I have to put my device too there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and no. I can say, well, I'm working, you know, but... Um, but just to say there's life that we live and the devices are put away or we, you know, that that you're experiencing something together. Maybe it's vacation. Maybe it's a drive. And you don't take the picture that you're showing them. Because really what we're talking about in, in that regard is just practicing presence and being instead of doing for applause. Yeah. And so I think the more that we can slow down for our children's sake, the more that we can be still, the more that we are experiencing opportunities um, and not, I mean, that's that's how we're saying we create room to serve. And that, that even goes back to the point about service. The best place for the my children to learn or maybe other women to even learn, uh, I'll never forget, a, I read uh, a woman who was talking about mentoring young women. And she said, all these women that want me to mentor them, they want to go out for coffee. That's not how you get mentored in my life. Mm -hmm. If you want to be mentored in my life, you have to come and serve with me. Mm -hmm. You Do might come and serve with me, with me in my home. <laughs> That's right. In my home, yeah. or you're going to join the ministry where I'm sharing. Because in order for you to really absorb what you think you want to get from me, yeah. you have to absorb it from me where I'm serving. Right. That's As if you get standard. anything else from me without that component, you're not getting the whole picture. So I think leading by example. I think that's what leads to frustration. Mm -hmm. I think people, to your point, is they're not getting the response that they want mm. from the position that they're at. And so they're constantly striving for more when they don't, when the question is, are you doing it even when no one is watching? That's right. Are you doing it to fulfill something on the inside of you that God's placed that only that space can be filled with service, with compassion and love for other right. people. Yeah. And it's it's making like our young people frustrated. Mm -hmm. They don't know what they're looking for. Right. They but they're looking for something. And and I love that that when we slow down and realize it's not the more we do. Yeah. You know, it's the more we look around right. us. Mm -hmm. The more we observe the people around us and the things that need to be done. Right. And I mean, because we all serve, you know, we serve our families, we serve at home. And, but there's, there is, we can do things outside the home as well, Absolutely. you know, and find people, whether it's holding the door for someone, going That's in the, right. you know, in the department store or the grocery store or giving smiles and right. just all these things. They, I find when I do that, I am happier mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. than when I've just done something that I that that should be you know while well, somebody else may applaud yeah. at I yeah. find that it's more do it for it yourself gives me more <laughs> yeah it does something to the inside yeah. of me it makes me feel like this is really worth living this is what this is what living's all about right. you know and I think that's when you feel frustration it's good to pause and go what why am I frustrated what am I looking for that I'm not getting mm -hmm. right and that really ministry good. is looking at the people that the Lord has placed in your sphere of influence. Right. They are in very intentionally, divinely appointed to your touch, yes. yeah. to your ministry of words of encouragement or affirmation or serving or ministry of presence, just being there. Right. Yes. So the platform, the, the audience is, is not the daily ministry. The ministry is this family the Lord has entrusted to me, the neighbors that live on either side of me, the other parents at my kid's school, they're in my immediate sphere. The, the grocery store clerk, the, the lady behind the desk at the dry cleaners, you know, where I'm dropping off. These are the people that the Lord is saying, if you would allow me, I will by the Holy Spirit, open up your eyes to opportunity today yeah. to partner with me in ministry to these people. That is effective ministry to me. Right. But there's a part in the Bible where he says, would you do it for like 50? And God's like, yeah, I would change my mind for 50. Would you yeah. do it for 25? Uh -huh. I would do it for 25. And he gets all the way down. He's like, I would do it for one. And I just think about why we think five isn't enough. Why are five people not valuable? Mm -hmm. Why? Why are they only valuable when they come in hundreds or thousands? Mm -hmm. Why aren't that? Because you were valuable as one. Mm -hmm. You were valuable with the blood of Christ for your one body. You didn't have to get in a group of 100 women to become valuable to God. You were valuable with one. So why don't we cherish the five yeah. or the one, the coffee, the, the breakfast, the 
girl in the line at the school drop off or whatever it is. Like, let's cherish the one because they were bought with the exact same price Jesus that was I was. Always after the one. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, the one in the 99, the sheep, you know, yeah. he was always going after the lost one. Well, I think it's what you were saying earlier. It's not really about the five. It's about what the five say about me. Right. So does it, if, if there's just one, what does that say about my value? Mm. If there's five and she has 5,000, what does that say about my value? I mean, Jesus was running away from the crowds, yeah. you know, regularly, <laughs> intentionally, intentionally <Yeah. laughs> saying, I need to get to a quiet space where I can talk to God, hear my father, and to know what it is that I'm supposed to do next. He went out of the way in John chapter four to talk to the woman at the well. You know, he was crowded around by so many people in Luke, and yet he noticed the woman that was crawling underneath the ground to touch the hem of his garment. And when the disciples said, you know, you, no one touched you, there's a bunch of people around you, he knew that it was just the one. Mm -hmm. So he was attuned to the one, and I think was intentional about paying attention. And so, when you are saying, okay, why, do, why are the five not enough? I think it goes back to worthiness yeah. and Jesus spending time alone and making sure that he was checking in with the father mm -hmm. was like, I, I am already a son. Mm -hmm. This does not in any way validate who I am or what I'm supposed to do. Right. The only thing, the only person that validates who I am and what I'm supposed to do while I'm here is you. And in order to know what that means I have to do, I have to come away with you. I have to keep hearing your validation of who I am so that I'm not caught up in the 12, the five, the three, or the 5,000. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where we have to be really careful. You know, even in serving, I think Jesus modeled such great, um, his model of service was in so many of these small things, but also in his willingness to be greatly inconvenienced and how do you know, you know, how do you know? I think for me, the question is, um, because life is hard and full and there's a million things on my calendar and the <laughs> kids have all the things going on and my husband needs me, church needs this. It's like, okay, uh, I want to do the small things. I also want to make sure that I'm availing myself to the inconvenient things mm -hmm. and the servant serving opportunities that are large. And how do I know when I'm supposed to create this inconvenience in my life or allow this inconvenience in my life for this large area of service versus a small thing? The only way I know the difference is to get away with my father yeah. and to say, I, my body, my soul, my time is yours. And how can I engage and involve myself in what you're doing that you want me to be involved in today? So Jesus modeling for us, not only the willingness to go to the one, Jesus modeling for us, not only the willingness to be around the 5,000, the willingness to be inconvenienced, to go out of his way, but also modeling for us that knowing the difference, small, large, in, out, today or tomorrow, her or him, it involves going back to the Father and asking him, I want to avail myself to service. You said, sometimes it's like, what am I getting? And the question that answers that often is, what am I giving? Mm. And how do I know what to give? Well, there's only one person that has the ultimate plan. Right. And my service should align with what he wants me to do. And he's the only one that knows that. And that's beautiful. Mark chapter 2 is a great example of that, Crystal. Um, Jesus has been doing, like, had 24 hours of, like, miracles and teaching and preaching and all the things. Mm -hmm. And then he goes into a house where he's staying, and it says that the 12 disciples were like, come on, Jesus, there is a crowd of people outside of the let's, door. It's let's like, keep going. let's keep going. You can demonstrate your glory. You can make sure everybody knows you the Messiah, <laughs> that you are who you say you are. It's like the 12 were his own little personal Instagram page. His, high, like, his hype crowd. Yeah, they his hype groupies. crowd. Come on, we can go. And they're like, the whole city, it says, is like knocking on the door. They're yeah. trying to get his attention. Right. So this crowd is there. And then it says that he steeled away by himself mm -hmm. to recalibrate. It's like you have to quiet the demands of the crowd mm -hmm. that wants you to publish who you are. And you have to pur purposefully, intentionally take a moment, like you said, Crystal, with the Father, to recalibrate. Lord, help me right. not to be dulled to what you have for me because of the crowd that might want my attention in some area. Help me, Lord, to know your heart for me. And then the next verse, after he spent some time with the Father, the next verse says, and then he left 
and went to Capernaum because his father said, you're supposed to be preaching over yeah. here. Mm -hmm. So forget that the crowd is at your door. Forget that the, the, your 12 closest friends are saying to you, hey, come on, let's go. Let's uh, make a big deal about you. Um, only spending time with the father and then trusting him. You know, for, for people that are watching and even us as we talk, how do we know? Well, ask the Lord to open your eyes to opportunities He's giving you to serve throughout a 24-hour period of your day. And then look for that warming of the Holy Spirit on the inside of you that causes your heart to burn with conviction when you see that or that phone call comes or that person catches your attention in the grocery store or another mother that you're talking to. And then ask the Lord, this is one of my regular prayers, Lord, would you give me enough overflow of resources, of patience, of time, give me enough overflow that when I recognize that, mm. that gut feeling in my heart that this is you giving me an invitation to join you in ministry to this person, um, give me enough overflow of whatever I need in that moment, patience, <laughs> to pause yeah. and say, okay, Lord, let me give this person a bit of my time, encouragement, listening ear, whatever that is. And I think he'll honor that for the heart that's willing to say, Lord, I'm with you today on this journey. So I'm looking for the response of the Holy Spirit in me and then the opportunities you'll give me to function on your behalf, to be your hands and feet in these people's lives. It's beautiful. Yeah. I think that's that whole thing is we have to learn to step back. Yeah, you're right. We really do. It's We're not going to ever learn it unless we're willing to step to, back. To step back. Yeah. You know, and we're always being sucked into this vortex mm -hmm. of how busy we can be and how yeah. much we can do and how many posts we can post and how many pictures. I mean, there are people who like take their personal photographers around Listen, to catch everything. their Roll social, catch everything. every Stop. little social media thing. And that's not, that is not stepping back, yeah. you know? And I think that until we learn to step back and really be mindful of our own ability and energy yeah. and you know, what we, what is important, we're never going to learn to be able to hear God say, go over here. We'll never have the overflow to do what he's asked us to do yeah, because no our reserve is, is been depleted. But God said, use whatever gift you have. That's right. To encourage. I like to decorate. I love to create atmosphere. You're good at it too. You're so, really good. well, thank you. <laughs> yes, you are. So, I have friends and they'll send me pictures. I'm redoing my kitchen. I'm doing this. What do you think? What do you think? And I, you know, and it's not it's not hard. You know, I'll give them my best advice, you know, and say, "Well, maybe this or maybe that." And but it's it's something that God's given me that I like to do. Yeah. So, it's not inconvenience. Yes, maybe sometimes I've got a lot going on, but I always have the resources within me to help them. Yeah. Right. And I think that's what you're saying. A lot of times, if it's in you already, it's not something you have to manufacture. Yeah. God's given you that gift, so now just give it to someone else. Right. And you know, many times we don't look at that as necessarily helping because it's not difficult. Yeah. And we think, well, it's gotta be difficult. You know, it's gotta be effort. It's gotta be sacrifice. Well, you know, sometimes it's as simple as just giving someone something that you know or that you can do or it comes easy to you. There's a young lady named DJ. Uh, the day before our mother's, me and Crystal's mother's funeral, she sent us a text and she said, I don't have much to give, but I can come over mm. before your mother's funeral. She's a makeup artist mm. and just put some makeup on your faces for you. And I remember at the time thinking, do I, do I need, do I want, need my makeup done for my mom's funeral? The relief that it was for her to just come over, sit in our parents' dining room, their little dining room at the house where they raised us. My dad still lives there. And just not have to worry about that that morning. Yeah. That was a beautiful act of service. And to your point, she just used the gifting that she had to be a blessing to me and my sister on one of the most difficult days of our entire lives. And I will never forget her kindness, her thoughtfulness, and her willingness to say, well, I can't give them much, so I'm gonna do nothing. Mm -hmm. But instead saying, but this is what I do have. Let me offer that and see if it can be a blessing to you. And it was, it was a huge blessing to us that day. I love that. You pray? Yes. Father, just 
thank you for this time together and to be able to share, Father, that you, you're not requiring anything of us that we don't have. But Father, you've freely given us so many gifts and so many talents and opportunities. And Father, we wanna freely give that to the people around us, to the people that are in our sphere of influence. And Father, we thank you that we will learn to step back and just have some margin in our life to hear from you and to just be in your presence, Lord, so that we can know the next place to go and the next thing to do. And Father, I truly believe you want us to live this life with joy and anticipation. So Father, we thank you that you're giving us that joy and that, and that, that readiness and willingness to serve other people as we serve you. So Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the wisdom that's been shed abroad in our heart, Lord, and we love you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen.